Hey people, how are we doing? It's Fresh Mark Sense with another fresh review, aka Zest for Life. Today I'll be checking out some fragrances. Um, well, let's start with uh, how I came to this video. I was walking outside, it was a cold day, very brisk, and I was thinking of Cozy Sense, and I didn't want to do the same video as the last previous ones where they were kind of um warm spicy sort of cinnamon uh you had some alcoholic rum notes and we've gone through the leather notes and the very um the very sweet and gourmand amber notes and these are all sort of warm gourmand uh sweet scents that i've been covering and i wanted to cover something a little bit different so today i'm going to give you some tobacco fragrances because it has a certain richness about the note that i really enjoy because i do enjoy slightly spicy fragrances uh, aromatic fragrances i've gone into cardamom and the like um, but the note of tobacco it can be done in a very raspy and harsh and uh, pungent way uh, and but there is also notes that are very hay-like and very soft of tobacco. So there's a range of tobacco fragrances. Um, I have only about six in my collection. I was going to do a top five, but I thought it would be a little bit tragic to leave the one out. So uh, I would do six fragrances, and these are a range of fragrances from the more opulent uh, light tobacco spiced mixes to the more heavy rich and smoky tobacco varieties so let's get straight into it fresh mark scents the first one in my selection is cheruto tobacco by pandora saints now these fragrances are sort of uh, duplicates of other fragrances this is obviously a copy of tom ford uh, tobacco vanille but uh, I think this is fantastic, actually, as a clone. I mean, I smelt the real, uh, the real Tom Ford Tobacco Vanilla. It does have uh, a richer, more spicy and in-depth, more complex tobacco. And it has a more um, almost mince pie-like uh, dried raisin uh, fruit profile to it which is more high definition let's say than this fragrance um and the vanilla is sort of it, sandalwood is more creamy in there and then, and then the vanilla is more airy and sweet let's say so uh, overall the original tom ford tobacco vanilla is better than this but for the price of 25 pound for 100 milliliters uh, I'm not just saying just buy a cheap fragrance because I never recommend cheap fragrances just uh, that don't smell good. I'm recommending this cheap fragrance because it smells good, right? A £25 for 100ml, you get uh, the same uh, scent profile, but more blurry, let's say. So you get uh, a nice vanilla, which is powdery, uh, a little bit creamy. You get the dried fruit. The dried fruit is done very nicely in here and then they mix a little bit of cacao dusting to make it uh, more chocolatey mixing its own sort of flavor of the tobacco because the tobacco in tobacco vanilla tom ford is more smoky it has a, has a slightly more smoky note to it but this has that same spicy top note or the tobacco leaf but it's mixed nicely with cacao. So it slightly veers into its own thing. And that's what makes it a great dupe, really. Uh, it's supposed to be a clone, but it's more of a dupe, let's say. It's like a, uh, which I know duplicate means double exactly. But uh, it's um, it's sort of copying it, but it's doing it in a slight offish way that is its own thing, just because of the mix of cacao. And when they blend the blurry vanilla and cacao dusting is sort of chocolate vanilla and the dried fruit is is more of a curve like this then you're getting all the sharp notes of all the flavors in between so it's a low definition very mass pleasing heavily projecting version of tom ford tobacco vanilla so the reason why people choose this over tobacco vanilla is because the people who really want to get smelt from a long distance this does project further and I wear this when I'm going out like I don't know if I was a protester or whatever going out 
and I, I just wanted to uh, expel that strong scent that is rich, a little bit smoky, sweet, but that vanilla that projects is very warming, rich and uh, sensual actually. I, I think it's very nice, but uh, it, it could do with a bit more high definition treatment like to tobacco vanilla in the in the vanilla to stop it from being a little bit meh in the dry down with the vanilla but the tobacco note in here is fantastic and mixed with the cacao it really makes a, a nice fragrance it's just the vanilla at the end it sort of dissipates it it, it, it spreads and um, it actually projects further than you can smell so when you by the time you've actually worn it for a while that vanilla it's uh, spread into a ciliage of the air and you can't smell it so much on yourself, but that's because it's all around you. So don't forget that when you're wearing Chiruta tobacco, it is a great projector, a lot of ciliage and a fantastic scent. Let me talk about the top notes when I originally spray, spray this. That's quite a few sprays actually. See, you only need about uh, two sprays with this because it is quite, it's soft but it's uh, long lasting in how it sticks to the clothes for about about one day and on the skin it would last for about now and hours so it's fantastic in terms of longevity and ciliage so you get a sort of cacao and dried fruits top with the spicy uh, top note of the tobacco leaf the tobacco leaf in the beginning is very nice quality but that spiciness that is, is at the top it sort of it it lingers but um it's not at the forefront of the fragrance so it has a nice aromatic spicy top note spiciness from the tobacco which is almost does it have vetiver in it it has a slight hay like impression but it's more chocolatey uh from the cacao and dried fruits dried fruits just give it a slight mince pie just a slight uh raisin like uh, glazed sweetness and then in the base you can smell the vanilla but it's a very fuzzy vanilla it's not a high definition uh, um, sweet powdery uh, wafer vanilla it's uh, it's just a creamy soft engulfing vanilla so very warm very satisfying and it has an okay looking bottle I'd say the cap looks pretty cheap but if you look at it like this, it's fantastic. And I like this guy over here. This reminds me of Che Guevara. Beautiful bottle. <laughs> so, next one <laughs> is Pure Havana. So, this is a fantastic one. I'm lucky I kept this, actually, because I sold my Angel by Moogler because the caramel was okay, but the patchouli was a little bit dirty for me. Some people love that, and I kind of miss that a little bit. So I kind of regret it, but I'm not bothered to buy Angel by Moogler again because this is the smoother of the two, in my opinion, because it's got... Oh, I love spraying tobacco fragrances on this jacket because it's the best uh, test ground for this. Of course, the skin is the best, but for clothes, always nice to test on a um, woolly fabric that has lots of um, different fibers, like worsted wool. So the more uh, little... Oh, the more tiny hairs that can catch the fragrance, the better, really. So this opens up to the sweetness of pipe tobacco. Now, pipe tobacco is the idea of a smoke actually being lit. So the tobacco is heated, so it's sweetened, yet it's smoky at the same time. It has an incense dry down and it has a sweet hay-like almost cherry and hay-like um facet when it's opening it has that sweetness and then the cacao and honey sets in what i really like about this fragrance is the blend of honey cacao and tobacco <coughs> it is is a little bit powerful if you just sniff directly but this lasts for a decent amount of time. I love the longevity of Angel by Moogler Fragrances. I think that's why they've been such a collectible later on because 
some fragrances uh, during a lot of fragrances during the pandemic uh, from 2019 onwards. The longevity has been reduced because, I don't know, people reduce spending and the like and they, they just reformulated everything. But uh, uh, Mugler by uh, Havana has always uh, stood the test of time in terms of reformulation and really lasting a long time. And this is no different. So that almost hay-like, hay-like cherry lit tobacco with the honey and the cacao is a sweet honey chocolate. It reminds me a little bit like a Toblerone, actually, when you add up all the flavors. Like a sweet, smoky Toblerone with a, a, with a glazed cherry on top, let's say. Looking like a gourmand, almost ice cream, almost. All, all of these scents coming together. Just imagining it pile on top with the little cherry to pipe, the cherry pipe tobacco on top. Very nice, very uh, sweet yet sensual. I would say Chiruto isn't actually as sweet as Pure Havan, but Pure Havan is more popular because the way it blends the honey note with the tobacco. And a lot of other fragrances have done this. Most notably, Churguai by Sergei Luton. Another fragrance with honey and tobacco. Now, they separate the tobacco leaf for this as well. Uh, people are saying, uh, like, uh, they talk about tobacco leaf in this one, uh, Chiruto. Uh, and this one also has tobacco leaf. And I think the difference is not much, really. But uh, the idea is a tobacco leaf is like an unburnt tobacco. So when they talk about cherry to cherry pipe tobacco, that is a burnt tobacco that is burning. It has that incense and it has this, it's all lit and everything's happening, you know. It's going through that process of smoking. And this one is uh, the tobacco leaf has that opening spiciness and a cool hay-like impression in the top note, which blends beautifully with the vetiver and actual hay note in the base with some creaminess of Bulgarian rose. That is all from my memory as I'm going on with this scent. But uh, that's what I remember from smelling this. Let's do this one more time. And over here. You guys know I'm smelling this directly and not mixing. Okay. Hmm. Sweet. Sweet, honeyed. The Bulgarian rose, or the rose note, I think it's Bulgarian rose. The creamy, almost slightly pink rose. Mixed with sandalwood and hay. And spicy top note of that tobacco. Wow. Fantastic. Let me just get this right on here. Fantastic. So, when you spray a lot on, you get a hay-like impression. A deep hay-like impression. And that is amplified the more you spray. But when you spray a little bit, you get the lightness, the light creaminess of the Bulgarian rose. And the honey forces its way through, almost like El Born by Cana Barcelona. It has a sort of green, green syrupy honey note. But this green syrupy honey note is formed by the honey, the vetiver and the hay note. And it's freshened by the rose. The sweetness of the honey blends beautifully with the tobacco leaf. And the tobacco leaf in here is spicy, dry, aromatic, golden. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm just... It's... Oh, wow. Almost cardamom-like sweet. No, cardamom is more green. I feel it's almost like the tobacco has an almost cumin touch, which is sour, sweet, uh, and 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 resinous, like a like a like there's saffron in here. It feels like there's saffron in here, but that is just the contrast and the clash between the spicy, dry, aromatic tobacco leaf and the sweet honeyed note. 
that is prolonged in its creaminess by that pink rose. It's a fantastic fragrance. A lot of people saying hype train, hype train, whatever. You know, you can talk about hype train, but this, uh, when I came into Harrods and I saw this first time, I said, I've got to try that. A lot of people have been talking about that. And wow, I was like, you know what? I believe the hype. I believe the hype once I put my nose on it. And this is fantastic. This is one of my favorite, um, actually, I'd say it is my favorite tobacco scent. Along with, oh, there's so many. I mean, I can't choose between the six of them. And we're going to go into the next one because, I mean, I'd be lying to myself if I just said that on camera and said that that was my favorite one when I love all of my children the same <laughs> my fragrance children my little perfume more no i'm kidding um bulgari man in black this is a favorite of mine in autumn and winter because it has a spicy top note of black pepper but a very soft um a very soft tuberose note so tuberose is a white floral Two bros is a white floral. There is some sour, sour woods in the base of hair that remind me of um, Bulgari Man Wood, Woodman, and Bulgari Neroli. There's a soft Neroli one of this. But I think that Bulgari Man in Black is the most complex out of all of them because it takes the sour freshness of Bulgari Neroli and the uh, dry uh, rich woods rich woody almost like cypriot wood um from k o de perfume it's that sour green fresh sort of damp jungle wood but not oak moss it's a dry sour fresh wood similar to the um what is it bulgari wood and it takes that adds some iris there's some punch of pepper in the beginning very creamy and soft tuberose so it really takes you from a journey from introducing the man with the punch of black pepper then um enveloping you with the softness of tuberose and uh, the sort of dominant kind of person has that sort of effect they would uh control everything in their vicinity so that it has but but in a calm and collected fashion so it does relax the people with that tuberose and then at the end it has a serious base of woods to let people know that this harkens back to some old school roots and good living. So that is a, that is the impression that I get from it because it's a, it has a solid woody base that really, um, it's just, it makes it most definitely a man's fragrance unmistakably. And I think that white floral in the middle shows the versatility of the kind of man wearing it that he is unafraid of wearing something slightly um opulent and a little bit white uh, florals that would be feminine but use it in a masculine way uh to provide some calm and strength at the same time it's a great mix of calm and strength so bulgari man in black is that fragrance that would give you um it's a it's a confident fragrance it's a bold fragrance it's a complex fragrance with the woods yet it's very easy to wear for a macho kind of guy who would be scared of wearing like too much flowers or the like very good if you want to dip your toes into the water of floral fragrances but you are more of the masculine type and you would be afraid of that check out the woods in bulgari man in black that is all I have to say. Iris, black pepper, nice sour woody freshness in the base and some tobacco in there, which is, I mean, the tobacco just gives a light spiciness and it really, complete, uh, really completes the sour freshness of the woods. Next one. How can I go through a list of tobacco fragrances without Mansura's red tobacco? Yes, you may have heard of this before. Because you could have smelled it from five miles away. The projection of this is beastly. I will give you a two spray warning. And that's from me. Somebody who oversprays all the time. You know, I don't care when I overspray most of the time. I'm, I'm caring. This is the first time I care for other people when I actually spray this um, less than 15 times. Um, 
<laughs> so, uh, wow, it's making me cough because it's got that. It's got that pepper, the incense, the plum liqueur. It is just plum, but it's like a plum liqueur because it's so syrupy and sweet. And the tobacco that comes from here, it is spicy like the tobacco leaf. And then it is smoky and rich because it's got its own smoke and incense note. The saffron is there. It's got a little bit of apple as well. Dried fruit. Got some oud. I'm smelling this all from here because it's so fantastically um, well, linear in a good way. Like it's got three long phases. Like this will last you a whole day in three phases. Like the first like three four hours three hours is one phase i'd say uh then uh three hours it would uh, smell like something else like more plummy and uh, resinous and smoky but in the first three hours it'd be very spicy and saffrony and you get that dried fruit um uh, but then it doesn't really stop after those six hours it carries on for another three hours where you get the most beautiful dry down of treacle like and uh, sweet vanilla that mix of it is almost like it is oud vanilla but uh, it is the dry down of red tobacco so this fragrance is almost like oud exclusive and oud vanilla in one plus tobacco and richness with a little bit uh, rich tobacco and the richness of Jardin's exclusives um, apple note just the apple note just in there <clears throat> mixed with the incense of Hindu Kush so if you know about Mansira fragrances, you know what I'm talking about. This is a powerhouse fragrance. If you don't know, get to know red tobacco for your all your tobacco <laughs> needs. But uh, spray only two because that rich plum, incense smoky character. Uh, it can be too much if you spray more than twice. You can spray, well, you can just spray once on the wrist. Uh, I'll give you a little technique. Rub it on your wrist. Then rub up on the inside, then rub that down, rub that all over your arm, rub on the outside of your arm, then rub that side all the way up and down onto your neck, the rest of your body, and you'll be fine still with one spray. And that's what I do, and I love to overspray. So one or two sprays is enough. Just rub it all over, you'll be fine. People say don't rub your fragrances, uh, sometimes that will destroy the fragrance. Yes, that's if you're over rubbing it. You're not trying to Chinese burn yourself. You are just trying to apply the fragrance around without scratching it out. And because it's such a long lasting fragrance, it's made to be dispersed. So definitely check that one out, Red Tobacco. And the last one, my most versatile tobacco fragrance, the most masculine, uh, well-known Date night fragrance, Dolce Gabbana, the one odor perfume. Yes, this is the year I'm giving you a lot of love because last year haven't really checked it out too much. Uh, uh, I do like ginger in a fragrance to make it aromatic. I love cardamom. It's got a bit of vetiver, a bit of tobacco, lavender. Not many fragrances I like with lavender actually because the softness uh, sometimes loses a punch of things but this has a nice calming lavender and it's sweetened by orange blossom and made a tiny bit spicy by the tobacco and that aromatic ginger is fantastic i just love it i just love i love the aromatic ginger with cardamom it's such a unique blend uh, and when it's mixed with the spiciness of tobacco it comes to life Yet it's not sporty. So um, musky ginger uh, has been used in white odor perfume to create a very fresh sort of bergamot inspired thing. But the, this tobacco fragrance stays not hay-like. There's many fragrances that are um, sort of hay-like in tobacco. Now, as I mentioned, there's about three, you know, which have sort of got that impression of hay-like and tobacco. But out of the tobacco fragrances, this keeps a a slightly fresh yet very formal and sweet edge with that mix of ginger and cardamom it's done so well it's not overly it's got sour freshness without being um 
without being overly sour and uh, uh, bitter almost. So this is a perfectly balanced fragrance. I can never get never get tired of this fragrance. Dolce Gabbana EDP has a very soft, I think it's the sweetness of lavender that stops this smoky fragrance. It's not actually smoky, it's more aromatic. Um, and aromatic, woody, and slightly herbaceous. Yeah, slightly herbaceous. It's got a touch of uh, vetiver in the base. And I think that's what makes it so special, really. It's just a mix of um, pepper, ginger, the orange blossom to keep it sweet and airy. The fact that it's got an aromatic side, yet it's airy and masculine. That's what it is. It's a air aromatic, airy and masculine. Not many fragrances can pull off the masculine vibe. Uh, which is uh, the leather, the woods, something maybe a bit barbershop. This is the closest thing to barbershop. Uh, one of the closest things to barbershop fragrances that I have. I personally don't like barbershop fragrances, so I don't have many to review uh, because I review the ones that I buy. But uh, this is the closest thing I have to a barbershop fragrance other than maybe Cartier Noir or something, which is not really a night fragrance, more of a daytime barbershop. So... This is a classic, unmistakably masculine, airy scent, airy aromatic fragrance. Dolce Gabbana, Eau de Parfum. I've gone through the lingo with you. I've gone through the whole journey in my mind of why I love this so much. But uh, maybe you can tell me in the comment section. But I think it's the fact that it can mix a masculine edge with the airy edge and still be aromatic and sweet uh, without being um, stuffy at any point or lose its edge throughout all this time it's been made i mean since 2008 a lot has happened since then and this is still this will still be a classic i think this dolce gabbana edp i'm going to show some more love is a modern classic well take care people let me know what you think in the comment section stay free and stay fresh now let me get on to the next thing i want to talk about this world has gone absolutely crazy when I saw outside the door, I saw um, a Audi ambulance stuck in a traffic jam. And it really made me think about the state of society. I've got to talk about this. What is happening to the NHS? We have got taxpayers paying for uh, an Audi ambulance stuck in a traffic jam. Uh, it's an emergency vehicle. Yet you can do the same job with a smart car. Um, nobody's going beyond, I don't know, two miles per hour in a traffic jam. They didn't have the smarts to use the GPS and go through. And I'm thinking we must be wasting a lot of taxpayers' money in unnecessary things. Uh, and if they actually go to somebody who is having a heart attack, if they, you know, if there's an emergency, maybe somebody's having a heart attack. Uh, and they go all the way up to a person. If they think that he has COVID, maybe they can run away and uh, the person would die before they say it's their fault. <laughs> I think um, maybe that's why they have an Audi, so they can run away from responsibility when somebody dies and just say that it's COVID's fault. Because uh, let me let me tell you right now, I've had personal experience of this where uh, somebody, I'm not going to mention their name, but uh, they came to uh they came to the house and uh they said that they were suffering from an overdose of uh a substance and uh, uh firstly i said why are you <laughs> why are you having problems at my house you should just go home and do that but um he wanted to call the ambulance and then the ambulance actually asked me um do you think he's got COVID? Uh, I think maybe because he's got COVID, we don't actually want to see him. And I said, but he can die of a heart attack. And he said, but sorry, uh, he's got the symptoms of COVID because he is lacking of breath. Um, so that we don't want to see him. So I thought, what would the Audi A7 do? The emergency car. I don't know how much that car costs, right? more than 50,000. right? But it was in a traffic jam. It was an absolute waste of taxpayers' money. Money shameful shameful 
right? Waste of taxpayers' money. So uh, it would literally go two miles per hour to the area, find out that they might have COVID symptoms, and then run away from the problem. We need an NHS service that works, not just for the people who have COVID or the people who don't have COVID, for everybody. We need to stop blocking up the NHS system with this uh, COVID problem, which is only 3%. And a lot of people who are uh, there for COVID beds and the like, they are not showing up because they rather stay at home and not be a burden on the NHS. So the NHS needs to uh, be reformed because the health secretary at the moment is an accountant and he does not listen to doctor's advice. The doctor's advice is not to take the vaccine because the vaccine, you'd have to be uh, boosted every month to have the same immunity as somebody who is convalescent. That means somebody who has gained uh, COVID from somebody else and gained immunity through natural methods, convalescence, they have more immunity than most people with vaccines. And you'd have to be vaccinated every single month. The whole health service will have to be vaccinated every month. It'll be a whole drain on a taxpayer's money. And we just can't do this in this financial um, system. It, it, it doesn't really work. And because 99% of COVID patients without other health conditions have recovered on their own without a vaccine, they, they didn't need a vaccine, uh, I think we should stop the nonsense, stop taking vaccines and <clears throat> free up the NHS health service for those who actually need it. Not the people who say that they've got COVID because really you can stay at home and if if uh, any of the vaccines don't work, then maybe it's uh, time. But not many people have actually died specifically just of COVID. Now, I may be called like, um, it's almost like a Holocaust denier or something uh, by saying this, by saying not many people have actually died specifically of COVID. Now, I will say this because uh, people have died of COVID only when they have other health conditions, people who are already sick. Most people don't need hospitalization and it's actually um, a burden on the NHS that people have said that they've got COVID and have taken all the places of uh, the NHS beds when people with heart attacks and heart conditions who really need the help can't actually get uh, the NHS's help. So now the NHS is overburdened by people who are paranoid that they've got COVID, but they actually either haven't got COVID or they can just recover on their own at home. Uh, so we need to, the only way to get back to normal is to start acting normal. And that is to free the NHS service and allow all patients to go through. And if you have COVID, the, I think the advice should stay the same, stay at home. If you do actually have COVID, the best thing to do is stay at home. Uh, now again, you go for walks, have a lot of, do a little bit of light exercise, uh, get some fresh air. It's all about keeping the window open. And I hope the, for the best. I hope you all to get better. You know, I've had people telling me that I hope you die with COVID just because I haven't gone onto the uh, public transport system with a mask. And I think that is monstrous. We need to stop blaming the unvaccinated for the vaccine not working. The vaccine, after taking three boosters, just accept it. The vaccine doesn't work. And if you got COVID after taking a vaccine, then that means that no other vaccine is going to work. And you might as well just wait out for your immunity to do its job. Because if it doesn't, then you're probably going to die. And yeah, it's a shame. I don't want to tell people that they want to die. But I'm going to tell people to wake up and take as many opportunities in their life as possible before that time comes. So I say, wake up, people. Go out without a mask. Enjoy your lives because it is too short to be staying at home. unless you got COVID, you know you got COVID, just stay at home. It only took me about, well, two weeks to recover from COVID. Like fully, no, three weeks to get my, uh, four weeks to get my scent back completely. Uh, and I thought I was living in black and white, you know, losing my sense. So the only way to get back to normal is to start acting normal. 
just stay at home for two or three weeks uh, if you if you really got the COVID. But you can still go about your normal daily life because it's not as contagious as people think. So let me know what you think in the comment section about all this. Stay free and stay fresh.